Now, if you want hope that your golf swing is going to change and you're going to be able to have the golf swing of your dreams, this right here is going to give you hope. So this is one of my students that I've been teaching for quite a while online on Skillist. For just a first glance at these two swings, they look like completely different golfers. You would have thought by looking at these that we have done a tremendous amount to be able to get him into one, this golfer here, to this one. You know, it's a crazy, crazy difference, and we haven't. We've only done a handful of things. So what we're gonna talk about in this video is you are so close to having the golf swing of your dreams. You're only a few little tweaks away, because that's what we did here. We're gonna talk about the two main things my student Pat, exactly what we did to make this crazy change. So let's dive into straight away what we did. We did two things, one setup and one thing with the hips. So our movement that we changed with the hips of how he moved really fixed so many things in his golf swing. Only possible though, if the setup was in a good spot. So we could see before with his setup and his width of his stance to be more specific, we could see really narrow extremely narrow feet and we could see the toes were pointing dead straight in front which we know when you do that that closes off the amount that you can move in your hip capsule the amount you can rotate into it so we can see after what is he way wider and with a flare in both feet which opens up the hip capsules yes i want you doing it with both feet so that's just going to give you a better range of motion backswing and downswing. So when we have that narrow stance, that's really just gonna cause you to have really, really poor hip movement. It's gonna cause you to rather slide and have a terrible sequencing because we're really negating any good backswing turn with those hips. So you're gonna have this long, awkward looking arm swing, which we could see with Pat, really almost looking weak of a swing would be a better way to put it. So from there, and you could see downswing quality, you could see the knees caving in because these feet were in a terrible position. And what we're gonna talk about with the hips made a huge difference for this. And then the flippy release to where when we see on the after there, how much better, more solid is his backswing from the front on. Really good, nice coil up. Again, it looks like a different golfer entirely. It's the same guy. And then we see there on the downswing, really nice separation of those knees, really good shifting. Look at his impact position. How much better is that? Crazy. Two changes we made. First one, wider stance, because that's really gonna make you have a much better stable base for you to be able to turn and produce power from. It's gonna really help so you're not having slidey, awkward movements. And also from there, that flare into the feet made rotation in the backswing a little bit easier. So then we could match up. Nice little bit of backswing turn with those arm movements. Got rid of that awkward looking weak backswing. So even from the down the line here, we can see just a crazy difference. We can see this real funky shaft structure. And then we can see from the before and then after, just looks like a top tour pro, doesn't he? So it's incredibly different. You would have thought we would be working on so many things and even touch stra shaft structure for most of our lessons. We worked on this one other thing, hip tilt in a downswing. Hip tilt. So this is something I talked about in one of my recent videos about the move that nobody talks about in the golf swing when it comes to moving your hips. Hip tilt. So that is the orientation and the inclination of your hips in the golf swing, especially the downswing with Pat. So with Pat there, one of the big things that gave us really most of our gains in his swing was keeping that lead side, your left side, lower in his downswing. Really keeping it lower, and then as he starts to get through the golf ball, a little bit of an extension move, which then raised up that left side, but that's only as we're coming through the golf ball. Now, what he was doing before, he was keeping the hips level. So both hip bones were very level. There was no inclination there. They were just completely level. You can see straight away by me demonstrating this. What's this doing? Look at my knees, they're caving in. So of course, if I had the flat feet at the same time, I'm gonna get no rotation and all my gonna do from there is throw my arms, chuck my angles at the golf ball. It's gonna look terrible, where if I had that left side down, look straight away. Nice separation of those knees, so that nice kind of squat, Sam Seed squat move. And then, because those feet are flared out with that hip tilt going down, now I can turn around through that shot. So, so many things start to fix themselves, even when it came to the sequencing of what happens with the shaft movement and how his body starts to move in the downswing, because he had that better flare of the feet, opened up the ability to be able to turn the hips. Getting up to the top of the backswing became way easier then when he kept that hip tilt to open up that lead side and get that lower body starting first, incredibly important thing in the golf swing. 
shaft then started to shallow a lot better on its own. I mean, I could go on and on about all the things that it fixed in his golf swing, and that's the case with most of my students. We're not working on tons of little different things. We are just working on a couple of things, which is a huge thing for you golfers out there. You don't need to work on tons and tons of things. You just have to work on the right thing at the right time. So root causes, not working on little intricacies. We could have worked on the shaft movement, we could have worked on his impact, could have worked on a ton of that, but we fixed them all we're just working on a handful of things. Now, of course, we worked on touching up a few areas, but the main gains were made from stance, foot flare, and hip tilt. So, okay, the drill we did with an alignment stick. So, alignment stick through the belt loops this is one of the main drills we did for a very long time. Now, what we wanna do here, put it in your belt loops and have the tiniest bit coming out on the right here, a lot coming out the left. So, Wider stance, we don't want to see you narrow. Really have a good look at your stance next time you film yourself. Now we want it wide and we also want it, so just outside the shoulder width and a flare in both feet to open up. That's going to really help you move a lot more like Pat and have that crazy transformation. So now with this stick in the belt loops, we can see the tilting movement of our pelvis. So we want to keep that pelvis angled down as we start to turn that downswing, angled down towards the ground and turning as we move through. So it's a down and around. It's not a bump up. You can see why that's going to put me in a lot of side tilt there. Not going to be good for your swing. We want to keep this stick pointed down and around and swing through the shot. So down and around, boom. Creates such a better dynamic movement. Gets a load of things fixed with the lower body without us even trying. It is the move for the lower body and it certainly helped Pat. So that's a great drill to go and do. Now, both of these things are great things to have in your golf swing. You need both of them. Good hip tilt and good wide stance with a flare of the feet. You all need to have a look at your own golf swing and see whether that's the case. Again, you can always send me in videos or lessons on Skillist. Link down in the description so we can have a look and see what we need to do. But this is where the massive stress point of this video is you're really not as far away from changing your golf swing as you think you are and making these huge, huge strides. Why so many golfers take so long to improve or don't improve or get worse is because they're purely either working one on the wrong thing or two, they might be working on something or a fault that they're doing in their golf swing, but they're doing it at the complete wrong time. Golf swing is so important to work on the right thing at the right time. It's one of the things that for me as a coach that I'm always thinking about. If it's a new student coming, that is the first thing is what are we working on and what are we working on in what order? So you have to do it, otherwise you will plateau and I know a lot of you guys out there on YouTube you are one in a crazy heavy plateau you've been plateauing for years which is why you're on YouTube of course watching golf instruction videos which is great but also you're thinking and working on so many things that might not even be related to your own golf swing let alone be the right time to work on something so absolutely really make sure you're really careful if you're trying to do it yourself It'd be very hard to do it yourself with working on your golf swing incredibly difficult I'd argue that most golfers will never get to where they need to be by doing it on their own. You need a coaching level of knowledge, but you need to work on the right thing at the right time. And of course, link in the description for Skillist, which is exactly where we did all the lessons, all the improvements you see on my channel. Are None of them are in person because I don't coach in person anymore. They're all done online via Skillist. Even better of a way to improve than in-person coaching. So you just have to have a go at it to see what I mean about it. So. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button if you want more golf instruction just like this. Hit a subscribe button, hit a bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video.